Hai Nguyen. Nguyen. Good evening teacher. Yeah, good evening. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, last night, teacher is supposed to be waiting, but then I went to the bed and I sleep a little, but after a while, I did not wake up. When I wake up, it's already morning. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, okay. I know you are waiting and my other student too. So, can we have a makeup class for this, Moyen? Like, uh, uh, on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. What time on Saturday? No, 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 no. Sunday. Are you okay, Sunday? Sorry, Sunday. Uh, yes, I am free on Sunday. Okay, Sunday at... Oh, wait, me know yet. Because I'm not free on Saturday. Sunday at 9 a.m. Is it okay? 9 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, 9 a.m. Mm, oh, okay. Okay, 9 a.m. Sunday. Okay, I will see you 9 a.m. Sunday, okay? Okay. okay, okay. I will see you 9 a.m. Sunday. Okay, so we have here vocabulary. We have the word cottage. Uh, by the way, Nguyen, we are now in pet. Teacher Anne is trying to have a pet lesson. Pet listening lesson, okay? So next we have small house, especially in the country. This one is a cottage. Okay, another we have packet. Okay, this one. A okay, small paper or cardboard container in which goods are packed for selling. That one. Okay, suppose think or believe that something is true. You like you will say, I will gonna, it's supposed to be happened. So it means you suppose that something are going to happen, supposed. Next is ladder. Do you know this, right? It's ladder. Okay, Pacific Oceans, the largest of the world's oceans lying between America to the east and Asia and Austral Australasia to the west. Okay. So we have here questions one to seven. There are seven questions in this part and for each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct pictures and put a check in the box below. Okay, please listen like cat. Pet is just the same. Okay, but it is quite expensive. Uh, 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 quite harder. So please listen carefully. Ready, Nguyen? Yeah. Okay. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 1. When will Jack's mum pick him up? Mum, I'm ringing to tell you I'm at Tim's house. Football practice finished early, so we walked here together. OK. Well, it's half past five now, so I'll come in the car and pick you up. It'll take me about half an hour, so I'll see you at six. Oh, there's something good on television then. Can you come and get me after it at seven? I can't, Jack. I've got to pick your dad up from the station then. Now listen again. Mum, I'm ringing to tell you I'm at Tim's house. Football practice finished early, so we walked here together. OK. Well, it's half past five now, so I'll come in the car and pick you up. It'll take me about half an hour, so I'll see you at six. Oh, there's something good on television then. Can you come and get me after it at seven? I can't, Jack. I've got to pick your dad up from the station then. Two. Which postcard will they send? We mustn't forget to send Mum a postcard. How about this one with a picture of the mountain? 
Well, it's nice, but we can't actually see it from where we're staying. What about a view of the lake and the village instead? Or perhaps one of the garden pictures, if you think she'd prefer it? Look at the cottage and all the flowers. Hmm, I think your first idea was better. We could put a cross to show where we're staying. Right then, let's do that. Now listen again. We mustn't forget to send Mum a postcard. How about this one with a picture of the mountain? Well, it's nice, but we can't actually see it from where we're staying. What about a view of the lake and the village instead? Or perhaps one of the garden pictures, if you think she'd prefer it? Look at the cottage and all the flowers. Hmm, I think your first idea was better. We could put a cross to show where we're staying. Right then, let's do that. Three. What do they decide to buy? Look, Kate, there are some of those biscuits you like. Oh, yes. Mmm. There aren't many in a packet, though, Mum. Why don't we have this cake instead? Remember, I've got my friends coming tomorrow. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I've already made a cake, and I've bought lots of ice cream. Well, I suppose some biscuits would be nice with ice cream. Do we need anything else? Now listen again. Look, Kate, there are some of those biscuits you like. Oh, yes. Mmm. There aren't many in a packet, though, Mum. Why don't we have this cake instead? Remember, I've got my friends coming tomorrow. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I've already made a cake, and I've bought lots of ice cream. Well, I suppose some biscuits would be nice with ice cream. Do we need anything else? Four. What has the girl forgotten to bring? Finish your drink. We'll be late for class. What are you looking for now? Don't tell me you've forgotten your homework. You said you were working on it really late. Don't worry. It was the first thing I put in my bag. Look, here it is. I won't be a second. Just checking everything. Pencil case. Now, where did I... Oh, you'll be able to lend me a pen, won't you? Phone? Oh, here it is. In my pocket, as usual. Now listen again. Finish your drink. We'll be late for class. What are you looking for now? Don't tell me you've forgotten your homework. You said you were working on it really late. Don't worry. It was the first thing I put in my bag. Look, here it is. I won't be a second. Just checking everything. Pencil case. Now, where did I... Oh, you'll be able to lend me a pen, won't you? Phone? Oh, here it is. In my pocket, as usual. Five. How does the man want his son to help him? Jamie, could you do something for me? Uh, well, it depends what it is. I'm meeting my mates in town. I want to clean the upstairs windows this afternoon, but I lent the ladder to John. Could you come next door with me and help me carry it back? I'll give you a lift into town afterwards, if you like. Sure, Dad. Now listen again. Jamie, could you do something for me? Uh, well, it depends what it is. I'm meeting my mates in town. I want to clean the upstairs windows this afternoon, but I lent the ladder to John. Could you come next door with me and help me carry it back? I'll give you a lift into town afterwards, if you like. Sure, Dad. Six. 
Six. Which TV program is on at nine o'clock tonight? Because of the football finishing late, there are some changes to this evening's programs. We won't now show the nature program about the sharks found in the Pacific at nine o'clock. Instead, the cartoon film The Mighty Heroes will be at this time, an hour later than advertised. You can see the nature program at its usual time next week. Now listen again. Because of the football finishing late, there are some changes to this evening's programs. We won't now show the nature program about the sharks found in the Pacific at nine o'clock. Instead, the cartoon film The Mighty Heroes will be at this time, an hour later than advertised. You can see the nature program at its usual time next week. Seven. What will the boy do first? I'm off now, Mum. I'm going to meet Ben at the youth club because he's bought a new wheel for his bike and he wants me to help him put it on. And I've got to go to the library to take my books back sometime today too. Well, do that before you start work on the bike because it isn't open this afternoon. Okay. And we're going to play table tennis after we've done the bike, so I won't see you until supper this evening. Bye. Now listen again. I'm off now, Mum. I'm going to meet Ben at the youth club because he's bought a new wheel for his bike and he wants me to help him put it on. And I've got to go to the library to take my books back sometime today too. Well, do that before you start work on the bike because it isn't open this afternoon. Okay. And we're going to play table tennis after we've done the bike, so I won't see you until supper this evening. Bye. That is the end of part one. Okay. When will Jack's mom pick him up? When? Very good. Letter B. Six. Which postcard will be sent? We have three postcards here. You said letter A. Very good, Nguyen. The one near the C. Okay. And what do they decide to buy? It's letter A. The roll cake. And five. What has the girl forgotten to bring? Okay, how about how does the man want his son to help him? How? Letter C. And which is program is at nine o'clock? Okay, letter C. It's about the flying man. I guess this is so is this? Captain America or the one who are going to fly? And what will the bo boy do first? Okay, letter A. Okay. She will gonna arrange. Okay. So listen, next one. Vocabulary, we have the word gymnasts. Okay. Gymnastic. Take up. Learn or start to do something. Okay, sensible, it means practical. Okay, well-known, it means Muyen, famous. You are well-known, you are famous. Okay, coach, it's a person who trains, a person or a team in the sport. A person who trains, a person or a team in the sport, we call them as coach. Okay, so you will hear an interview with a champion gymnast, the one who do the Okay, do exercise. So we have here the gymnast. Please listen and encircle the correct answer. Listen carefully. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. Yes. 
You will hear an interview with a champion gymnast called Maria Anderson. For each question, choose the correct answer. A, B or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part 2. Now turn to part 2, questions 8 to 13. You will hear an interview with a champion gymnast called Maria Anderson. For each question, Choose the correct answer. A, B, or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Okay, please listen. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I'm talking to Maria Anderson, a 16-year-old champion gymnast. Maria, have you always dreamed of being a gymnast? I got interested when I was eight. I loved running and jumping, and my teacher said I'd be good at sports. I read a book about a gymnast who took part in the Olympics, and her life seemed very hard. Then I went to watch a gymnastics event with my dad and saw gymnasts in action, and I thought, I'd like to do that. Did you realise immediately you'd be a champion? I tried too hard in the beginning. I'm very competitive and was in a hurry to learn the moves. I made so many mistakes, I nearly gave up. Even when I won prizes at events in my town, I didn't think I'd ever be really good. But a famous coach saw me doing floor exercise and said he'd give me lessons. And then I knew I could get to the top. You've done amazingly well since then. Has success changed you? I hope not. I'm growing up, getting experience, but basically, I think I'm the same. My coach says the best athletes are sensible. They don't let success make a difference to them as people. And I think that's true of me. It's just my mum and dad worry about me and wish I could lead a more normal life. What about school? Can you keep up with the other children? I go to the sports centre at 5.30 every morning to practice. So I've been working for three hours before I even get to school. It was hard at first. I felt really tired, but I'm used to it now. I rest during the lunch break instead of being with my friends. Lessons are all right, but I can't stay up late or go to parties. Do you have time for hobbies? Well, I travel a lot to events in other countries, and I listen to music on the plane. I hope I get a chance to go to a concert someday, and I like movies, but not cartoons. My dad films me when I'm performing in a competition, and I put together videos for my website, which is fun. What does your room at home look like? I've got posters covering every wall, mostly of singers and bands. The best thing is a photograph of me shaking hands with my hero a fantastic Russian gymnast I met last year. Oh, and I've got all my cups and prizes in a glass case. A bit embarrassing. <laughs> now listen again. I'm talking to Maria Anderson, a 16-year-old champion gymnast. Maria, have you always dreamed of being a gymnast? I got interested when I was eight. I loved running and jumping, 
and my teacher said I'd be good at sports. I read a book about a gymnast who took part in the Olympics, and her life seemed very hard. Then I went to watch a gymnastics event with my dad, and saw gymnasts in action, and I thought I'd like to do that. Did you realise immediately you'd be a champion? I tried too hard in the beginning. I'm very competitive, and was in a hurry to learn the moves. I made so many mistakes. I nearly gave up. Even when I won prizes at events in my town, I didn't think I'd ever be really good. But a famous coach saw me doing floor exercise and said he'd give me lessons. And then I knew I could get to the top. You've done amazingly well since then. Has success changed you? I hope not. I'm growing up, getting experience. But basically, I think I'm the same. My coach says the best athletes are sensible. They don't let success make a difference to them as people, and I think that's true of me. It's just my mum and dad worry about me and wish I could lead a more normal life. What about school? Can you keep up with the other children? I go to the sports centre at five thirty every morning to practice, so I've been working for three hours before I even get to school. It was hard at first. I felt really tired, but I'm used to it now. I rest during the lunch break instead of being with my friends. Lessons are all right, but I can't stay up late or go to parties. Do you have time for hobbies? Well, I travel a lot to events in other countries, and I listen to music on the plane. I hope I get a chance to go to a concert some day, and I like movies, but not cartoons. My dad films me when I'm performing in a competition. And I put together videos for my website, which is fun. What does your room at home look like? I've got posters covering every wall, mostly of singers and bands. The best thing is a photograph of me shaking hands with my hero, a fantastic Russian gymnast I met last year. Oh, and I've got all my cups and prizes in a glass case. A bit embarrassing. <laughs> That is the end of part two. Okay. okay. So we have here. So there is an interview with a champion gymnast called Maria Anderson. So first question is: Maria decided to take up gymnasts. Letter A is the answer at a gymnast competition. And number nine. When did Maria realize she could be champion gymnast? When? The answer is letter C. When a well-known coach offered to teach her. Okay, 10. Why does Maria think success has not changed her? What is your answer for this, Nguyen? Letter A. She believes she's a sensible person. And 11, what does Maria say about school? She has little time with school friends. And 12, what does Maria do in her free time? Make a video. And 13, what is Maria's favorite thing in her room at home? It's a picture of herself with another gymnast. Again. Okay. It's a picture of herself with another gymnast. Okay, you've got oh two correct answer. Okay, so this one. Now, Nguyen, you can see in here, you will hear a school teacher talking to a group of students about national poetry competitions. Okay, so look at this. Poetry means competitions on how to Make a poem. Okay, prices is up to 150 pounds. It is open to all and unpublished poems between 10 to 20 lines. Theme, King's Heart. Okay, so you will have to compete. A group of students who is willing or are willing to join the competition. Okay, so this one, please. 
Now turn to part 3, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a school teacher talking to a group of students about a national poetry competition. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Now could everyone sit down, please? I've got an important announcement to make. As you know, the National School Poetry Competitions that we usually enter are starting soon. All the competitions are named after animals. One of the competitions, called the Dolphin Prize, is for 15 to 19-year-olds. So, if you have older brothers and sisters in the school, get them to enter that one. But the one for people of your age, the Tiger Prize, is the one we'd like you to go for. We hope lots of you will try. As some of you may remember, the theme for last year was weather. This time, the judges have chosen the topic change. And that could cover a lot of things, couldn't it? A new school, a different house, for example. So, if you want to enter the competition, but you're stuck for ideas, have a look at last year's winner on the competition website. You may know the girl who wrote it, Maria Mason from our school, with her poem called Trains. She also got a little book of her poems called Travelling published as part of her prize. Maria won some money for the school too. 1,000 euros. And this time, that's gone up to 2,000 which is very generous. If anyone in the school wins, we'd like to use the money for the library, as we feel that's the right way for it to be spent. Maria's prize money last year was spent on the new computer software. Now, you may feel you'd like to enter the competition, but need some more help. If that's the case, you can look at the website. The Head of English, Mr Winters, has said you will find it really useful. Now listen again. Now could everyone sit down, please? I've got an important announcement to make. As you know, the National School Poetry Competitions that we usually enter are starting soon. All the competitions are named after animals. One of the competitions, called the Dolphin Prize, is for 15 to 19 year olds. So, if you have older brothers and sisters in the school, get them to enter that one. But the one for people of your age, the Tiger Prize, is the one we'd like you to go for. We hope lots of you will try. As some of you may remember, the theme for last year was weather. This time, the judges have chosen the topic change. And that could cover a lot of things, couldn't it? A new school, a different house, for example. So, if you want to enter the competition, but you're stuck for ideas, have a look at last year's winner on the competition website. You may know the girl who wrote it, 
Maria Mason from our school, with her poem called Trains. She also got a little book of her poems called Travelling published as part of her prize. Maria won some money for the school too, one thousand euros, and this time that's gone up to two thousand, which is very generous. If anyone in the school wins, we'd like to use the money for the library, as we feel that's the right way for it to be spent. Maria's prize money last year was spent on the new computer software. Now, you may feel you'd like to enter the competition, but need some more help. If that's the case, you can look at the website. The head of English, Mr. Winters, has said you will find it really useful. That is the end of part three. So, yeah. so the competition for eleven to fourteen is called the. Okay, what is this? It's not dolphin. Seven. The topic for this year is. School is about college, okay? And the title of last year winning poem was Trains, okay? This year, the prize money is available 2,000 euros, 2,000 euros. Moyen, you listen carefully. If successful, the school will spend the money on the library, correct? For further help, see the website. Okay. 20 to 25 million. Look up the six sentences for this part, and you will hear a conversation between a boy called Lucas and a girl called Claire, who had just been to concert by the band called Candy Plus. Decide if its sentence is correct or incorrect. You will say A for correct, yes. Before no. So again, you will hear a conversation between a boy called Lucas and a girl called Claire. So Lucas and Claire are talking to each other. Okay. So they just been to the concert by a band called Candy Floss. So it means they are actually talking about Candy Floss. Let us listen. Okay, I will play this twice. Please listen carefully. Now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a boy called Lucas and a girl called Claire who have just been to a concert by a band called Candy Floss. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, choose the letter A for yes. If it is not correct, choose the letter B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I'm really glad my mum let me go to the concert. I didn't think she would. But there were lots of people our age. What did you think of it, Claire? Well, I wasn't sure at first if I could go. But luckily mum and dad bought me the ticket for my birthday. And wasn't it great? Our seats were only ten rows from the front. We got a great view. Mm. Well, I was worried about the concert when I saw Candy Floss on TV last month. One band member had just left, and they weren't brilliant. Mm. But I don't think they've ever performed as well as they did tonight. Mm. And what about their dancing? I thought they needed to do some more work on it when I saw them on TV during the summer. But tonight it was exciting. 
You notice that because you go to dance classes. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Probably too busy looking at their clothes. The dresses they had on in the first half were okay, I suppose. But what were those silver things they changed into after that? Oh, they always wear those during their concerts. I think they looked really original. Really awful, you mean? <laughs> anyway, what about getting their new album? I'm not sure I can afford it now. There have been lots of reviews on the internet, and some said it isn't very good. But the songs they did in the concert were great. And I've got all their other albums, so it'll add to my collection. You should, then. Hmm. But did I tell you, I've read the main singers thinking of leaving. Well, if the fans think someone's leaving the band, they might not buy tickets for the next concert. Mm. That means plenty left for us to buy. 